Hey guys, it's Kay the PA and today I'm going to be talking to you about my job as a tech at the hospital. If you want to learn more about this job, stay tuned. Okay, so every morning when I come home from work, I make sure that I wash my face, you know, make sure that, you know, I change my clothes. I don't sit on my bed with my work clothes because that's just disgusting. You know, I take a shower and make sure I get all that hospital icky germs off of me. And then I go straight to sleep. Okay, so I had all the intention in the world to just like make a video in my uniform, <laughs> but I just got out of those things. I don't like, you know, staying in my uniform when I'm in my house. So I took the uniform off and I'm just going to do the video laying here. Um, But I'm just going to go over some of the things that, you know, like I do on an everyday basis at my job and um, you know I'll tell you like a little bit about it what I do and all that good stuff okay so first things first um, what do you need to be a tech at a hospital um, some hospitals only accept um, CNA license and some accept both CNA or EMT license. Um, so it just really depends on which hospital you're, um, you're applying to. But I'm working under my EMT license. I did EMT for about a year and a half and I've been doing um, tech work for about a year and a half now. So it's about equal. Okay, so the second question is how did I get the job? And I just applied everywhere. You know, when I say everywhere, I mean everywhere. Um, of course, there were certain places I really didn't want the job. You know, I was kind of like, you know, looking to just expand my skills and try something new and just build my resume when I wanted, um, when I decided to um, become a tech at the hospital. Because I already knew what it was like to be an EMT in the field. And I knew that if I wanted to go to PA school, I really needed experience inside the hospital. So, you know, I tried for months to find a job inside the hospital. And, um, you know, like, I think when I found the right place, it just felt right, you know, because I had other job interviews. And, you know, I, I silently, I secretly wished, you know, that... I didn't get the job because I really didn't want to work there. And then when I um, got the interview at the job that I'm working at now, I'm like, please, Lord, please, <laughs> please let me get this job. Okay, so the next question is, what do I do as a tech? So as a tech, you know, I'm really, um, some people call it like a nurse's aid. You know, a lot of people, if they want to get into um, nursing or PA or MD, you know, um, 
if they want to go further, they usually just become a tech for the experience. That's exactly what I'm doing. So for now, I'm just like assisting the nurse. That's like basically the job. So anything, you can basically do everything a nurse can do in a sense, except like pass out the meds and, you know, do, I mean, there's other things, but that's like the main thing, you know, cause you're there by the nurse's side, you know, just um, turning the patient and, you know, bathing the patient um, just doing little things like that, um, and assisting in any way to make the patient like comfortable. Um, and you're also like, I also do vital signs, um, every couple of hours and, you know, you, you check glucose, you, if you, if you're trained, uh, not every hospital allows it, but if you're trained, you can do telemetry, which is what I do. You know, you watch the heart monitors. You can take a class, you know, if you want to learn how to do that, at least at my hospital. I know they won't let you do that everywhere. Because um, to me, I want to learn everything. Because when I become a PA, I want to make sure, you know, that I know like a broad range of things and I'm practicing over the years so that I can help my patients in the best way possible and provide the best care. Um, some other things that you may do is like you do EKGs. It's really, it's a lot of these things, you know, before I became a tech, I thought it was hard and, you know, it'll probably take a while to learn how to do, but I don't know. It's like, I'm not like the same person I was, you know, when I first became, became an EMT, when I first started working as a tech, cause I'm learning all this stuff and I'm like, wow, everything I thought was going to be challenging. I'm just, it's like nothing to me now, you know, cause I'm just so used to it and it's like easy, but that's why I try not to limit myself and, you know, just tell myself something's going to be hard. Because usually when I experience it, I'm like, oh, okay, it was not that bad, <laughs> you know. So, um, yeah, um, that's pretty much it for, like, tech work. You know, sometimes you sit with, like, big rack patients, and those are patients that um, they want to harm themselves or other people, so they have to be watched for a certain number of hours. Um and you just watch them to make sure they don't hurt themselves. And you just basically sit there for 12 hours. Usually during that time, I'm watching, um, sometimes I watch like a movie with a patient. Um, and like sometimes, sometimes like when they're sleeping, I sit there and I do my homework. To me, that's like the perfect opportunity to do homework. But sometimes you get so sleepy, you know, because I work at night and I get so sleepy. So I'm just sitting there trying to stay awake. It's hard to focus on on homework. So a lot of times I try to get the homework um, out the way. Like, it, you know, I, I don't wait till like three in the morning to start the homework because then I'll be sleepy and, you know, I... It's really hard sometimes to try and stay awake, but if that patient runs out the room and you're sitting there sleeping, it's not going to be good for you. So sometimes it's better just take a, a break or, you know, walk around a little bit. So that's, that's basically it, you know, you, and one other thing is that you can do is probably like transport patients to different floors. You're just like a helping hand basically to you know, the nurses and yeah. And, um, uh, for me, I float. Um, so I work on every floor. So whichever floor they need me the most, um, that's the floor I work on. And at first, you know, I wanted to work in the ER and I'm like, man, that's what I want to do. You know, but sometimes it's like one of those things where God, doesn't want you to go through that you know he doesn't want to put you in that position some a lot of times he puts you in better positions because to me it's more helpful for me as a PA to float and learn about every floor and 
you know, just like learn different things before um, I start PA school. To me, that's more beneficial to me than just like staying in one place, like in the ER. So, you know, it worked out in my favor. I was actually going to ask, you know, after a couple of months, can I switch to the ER? But when I saw, you know, how like the floating thing worked, I'm like, man, I love this. You know, I don't have to deal with the drama of working on one floor. Um, you know, I just go to a different floor every day. And I, I kind of like that. It made me be a lot more independent also, you know, and just it just opened me to new challenges. So that's what I like about it. Hey, the next question is, what do I like most about my job? I think the best thing about my job is that, you know, I get to help people. <laughs> you know, it's really cliche, but to me, I, I like the fact that I get to just be, you know, the the person that's like helping someone at their like most vulnerable moments. You know, when you can't wipe your own butt or when you can't walk to the bathroom by yourself, when you can't, you know, take your a shower by yourself, when you can't do little things for yourself, you know, I get to be that person that helps you. And you can tell that it makes like a big difference in somebody's life. Like they're so happy when you're able to help them. You know, they become... um very appreciative at least most people not all you know some are pain in the butt but for the most part they really appreciate it you know and because I think most people would want to do things for themselves and it's kind of embarrassing at certain um points you know when we have to do certain things for them and it's like there's certain things I don't love doing but I'll do it because is helping someone and you know I'm helping them the best I can of course the next appropriate question will be what do I hate the most about my job and you know to me I think this this is a really good job overall you know and I'm getting a lot of experience but one thing that just irritates me is when I have like younger patients you know that can that can actually do little things for themselves and then they ask you to do to fluff their pillow or I don't know, just do the, like the smallest task that they are able to do themselves. You know, I can understand if you're younger and, you know, you, you got into an accident and you broke all your bones and you can't move, you can't do anything. But sometimes you have those really lazy patients that, you know, they can help themselves, but... You know, they have that whole sy syndrome where they they love people um, catering to them. It's called laziness. You know, <laughs> that's what it's called. And it's very annoying. Um, and I don't know, like, sometimes I just grit and bear. <laughs> because, you know, you got to remain professional. Okay, how much do techs get paid? Um... The amount really depends on the hospital you work for or the company you work for. The company that I work for, they pay really well, <laughs> so I can't complain. Um, I think like at this hospital that I work or the company, they I think they pay between 13 and probably like 19. It just depends on your experience, probably even more than that, maybe 19, 20. Because when you float, um, especially if you do like mobile pool, where you just, um, you work for the company, but you go to different hospitals, they pay you like probably like four or five dollars more. And they pay you a lot more for traveling and all this other stuff. So it really depends on your position and also your experience. But, you know, you can make good money. Um, I think in the nursing home, they get paid less though. Um, you're more likely to get paid more at the hospital. Um, and I actually get paid more at the hospital than I did at my EMT job, which I think is weird. You know, I would think that as an EMT, you're out there putting your life on the line. 
um, it, you would get paid more, but you know, that's not how it is. Um, so yeah, <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> okay. So what times do I work and how many hours? So the basic setup for most hospital jobs is that you work a 12 hour shift about three days a week. Um, and that's the setup at my job. I work the night shift. I really can't work daytime. Oh my gosh, those people are crazy. It's like, it's just too much running around, too many families and doctors and x-ray techs and all this. It's just too much in and out. I can't deal with it. Too much traffic. Um, it's not like it doesn't get busy at night. You know, it definitely gets busy, but at least you have... You know three in the morning two in the morning where you get to have downtime and I like the setup you know of the three 12 hour shifts because you know once you work your 12 hours um, your 36 hours then you have like four days to yourself you know and the bad thing about working nights is that you tend to hibernate <laughs> like when you get the day off it's kind of like if I get off at 7 in the morning, I sleep like the whole day. And it's kind of like my day's over. So that's the sucky part about working at night. You kind of lose your day. Um, but overall, you know, I just love nights. I know it's not good for your health. You know, it messes up your circadian rhythm. And, you know, it, it you have a higher chance of getting cancer, all this other stuff. But... It, that doesn't faze me <laughs> you know I love working nights and that's what it is okay so what um, uniform do I wear um, like anywhere else you wear a scrub um, scrubs I don't know scrub scrubs um, and the color that I wear at my hospital is green but it could be different for a different hospital, somewhere brown, somewhere um, black. So it varies. It just depends where you work. I really like the green one. I could oh, brown would be dreadful. Uh, yeah, black is just plain. Yeah, I think green works for me. <laughs> Oh, and as far as um, shoes go, you can wear just like any um, any sneaker you want, basically. Um, I have like a little Nike, black and white. You know, it's, I like the bottom because it's like very like rubbery. And it's like easy to clean. Um, I wouldn't wear anything that um, I wouldn't want to want throw up getting all over or MRSA or C. diff or any of those nasty little um, diseases so yeah you know I, I wear like a nice little Nike shoes because it's cute and I like to look cute but um, it's gonna last trust me I'm not buy no new one anytime soon okay so um, the last thing I'm gonna do is compare the me before being a tech and the me after being a tech so before you know when I was like aimlessly looking for hospital jobs you know like I was kind of scared to be a, a tech on the floor you know I wanted ER because I figured okay well I don't have to really clean people like that and that was like <laughs> that was the thing I really didn't want to do I really didn't want to clean people and you know um like that was my thing in my head I have to sit there and like clean them and it, to me I just didn't want to you know deal with all that but the me now I'm like oh okay like you know I'm kind of humbled by it because you know I just saw how like actually giving someone a bath just made you know a big difference like you get to know the patients more when you're on the floor and sometimes it is good to you know have the patient for a little while and just you know send them to the floor as in like when you work in the ER sometimes it's great but I think a lot of times you know it's it's nice to sit there and talk to the patients you know and have like little conversations with them here and there um and you know I'm not as 
like disgusted about like cleaning someone now I'm more humbled by it than anything um it's, it's still not my favorite thing to do as far as like cleaning uh poop <laughs> I, I I don't think I can ever fully get used to that and that's not something I want to be doing for the next, you know, five, ten years, but I can handle it now, you know, because I know that it, at the end of the day, um, you want to, you have to clean the patients and you have to do what it takes to make sure they avoid infections, you know, make sure you, you're doing what it takes mm -hmm. to to make sure that they're basically comfortable, you know, because what if you were in their shoes? What if it was your family member? So that's what I think about when I think I don't want to do certain things. I'm like, okay, you still have to do it. So for the most part, I just try not to complain when I'm at work because at the end of the day, I know I'm working on something that, that I may not love, but it's going to lead me to the bigger um, picture, you know, and that's my goal of being a PA. It's going to lead me there. So I can't complain about every single thing. I just have to deal with it and do what I have to do. Okay, so, yeah, enough of my rambling. Um, I'm going to get some rest and read this book, Live Your Dreams by Les Brown. It's a really motivational, inspiring book. Um, but thank you for tuning in to K the PA. And hopefully I didn't just ramble on for nothing. But um, hopefully it was helpful. And um, don't forget to subscribe so you can get all my new videos of me rambling and whatnot. Um, and good night.